make sure we uh, have proper symbolism of what's going on here. So I do welcome you to Amherst Local Schools for this groundbreaking, warm groundbreaking ceremony. And you know, we're joking because the ground's too hard to break, but uh, we'll at least you know, go through the motion of that. But I do just want to introduce some people that are here, uh, make sure we all know uh, who's here today. We have our five board members. So we have, uh, oh, sorry, Jamie Landers, Anita Bach, Sarah Schutte, who's our board president. We have Bob Herber and Dennis Rector. And just uh, out of curiosity, Bob, you were the only board member who was here when this was built. Correct. Not the state of the A lot of life experience. <laughs> So 18 years ago, this, this facility was built. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a minute. But otherwise, we have Jim Winja, right. who's going to be the project manager from uh, Mel Lancer Construction. So he'll be overseeing this project. And then Ben Miller uh, from Garmin Miller, uh, Mr. Ohio. He's our lead architect, lead engineer, and a good friend of ours who's done a lot of work here with Hamburg Local School. And we have Tim Copsey, who is the Pauley County Economic Development Director. Uh, Tim's very instrumental in uh, the connections he's been making over the last year with area businesses, trying to drum up their support or interest in what's going to be built here and how the two can be interacting with each other. We hope to train kids to meet the needs of our, our county and our, and our village as well. Uh, Neil Curry is representing uh, U.S. Representative Bob Lattis' office. Uh, he's Bob's busy. Well, you can probably tell what he's up to right now. But they're very busy with uh, things in Washington, D.C. We do thank him for coming and uh, representing that office. And we have Brian Davis, who is the village administrator for Amboy. And uh, looking forward to that partnership of working with the village on uh, this project in terms of you know, providers of, of water, of course, and things like that. So, really uh, glad to have him here today. And we also have Tom Blake. And Tom, your wife? Yes. And I forgot her name. Cindy. Cindy. So Tom Blake is the uh, owner of the um, solar field out here on the southeast corner and a, a big donor to our school for a variety of things. And we're just glad to be here. I, that's why originally he had some other commitments, but he said he was dressed, so he came. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom is going to be very instrumental in our aquaponics center. Um, he has a, one part of his business has to do with raising uh, fish and things of that nature, experimenting with that. So as we, he's kind of made some verbal commitments of helping us in, with the, the greenhouse and the aquaponics center. So very excited about that. And he has already donated a hydroponics unit that we have in our cafeteria that we've used for a couple of years. And so that will be moved out into this area as well so that the kids can work with that. So really welcome, Tom. I can't hear you. Um, other than that, we have some staff. We, we have Harold Gottke, who's our IT director. Andy Messman is our facilities director. And we have some secretaries and some staff members who are here as well. Uh, from the press, we have Bryce Steiner from the West Bend News and Priscilla. Over here. And I always kind of say your name wrong. Kato. Kato. From the Holy uh, Cry here today as well. So we call some men. I don't think I, I think that's it. Other than we have staff members from the yearbook. Christine Stewart. Christine Stewart. Great. You've got a village with her, too. Hey, someone's got to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, Keith West from our Antwerp Village Council. We have him here today as well. And Chris and Jill with Pauline County. Chris and New addition to the Pauline County Economic Development. All right, I think I covered almost everybody. All right, so going this back, uh, just a brief comments on this building. So 18 years ago, constructed this facility for the, the students here in this community and this area right here was uh, put in place a patio area uh, for possible expansion someday if needed to be classroom and think am I right Bob just a thought so it's a really neat area and so for the last 18 years we've used it for uh, sometimes our kids have ate out here we have some seating that they may have set just on nice days probably not like today though <laughs> And there's just been some other events that have taken place here, but really, other than that, it hasn't been used much. And so, we, we, about five years ago, we jokingly we were talking about, boy, you know, when Makerspace was a big thing back then, five years ago, or at least it was coming out. And we had visited some schools just to see what some schools were doing with their Makerspace. Otherwise, we, um, were, we put all our Makerspace in our social media, not social media, our media center area. 
uh, we had some things down there. Um, we had some robotics that, that had been used in our, in our classrooms. And we had some other maker spaces in classrooms. But that's where we thought, well, hey, maybe, maybe this could be made into someday a maker space mm -hmm. in some capacity. So for the last five years, it has been spinning, growing. And we, the board, we kept them informed what we're thinking about doing. And as we visited places, just trying to think, how can we use this space to better equip our students for the, the jobs that are ahead of them and the skills they need? Uh, so two years ago, we really got involved with Garmin Miller and their expertise, what they've been building a few innovation centers in the Midwest, some of their ideas. And, and then actually up, up till a year and a half ago, we were, were gung ho, we we're going to do this, and then COVID hit. And so we put it on hold, not knowing, uh, you know, we're, funding and all this, what effects it would have on our general fund. We didn't want to have to tap into that too much. And so uh, coming out of COVID now in our uh, financial situ situation, pretty decent. Um, we thank the board last month, they approved five to zero to take, go ahead and break the ground here. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, as I mentioned to most of you, when we get done with our picture out here, we will have a little session in the boardroom we can all squeeze in there, or maybe you can come and go. Um, Garmin Miller has put together a little virtual video of what this might look like uh, come April 28th. So you can watch that, and it will be done today. I do want Tim Copsey, though, and I told him, it's not this. I told Brian, I said to Tim, you have five minutes. And Tim said, I only need two. <laughs> Tim didn't say that, did he? Yes, he did. Yeah. You couldn't do it. So, Tim, thank you for talking about your <laughs> Well, welcome everybody to this very special event. Um, about two years ago when I started this job and, and COVID hit, we started reaching out to all the businesses immediately and saying, what is it that we're going to need here as we go forward? And luckily, Paulding County was one that didn't really take a dip in the uh, economy as COVID was going through, but they immediately said, what we need is better equipped students that are coming out of the high school. Whether they're going to college and, and getting a different uh, aspect, going to Vantage, whatever, but those kids that are staying around uh, the area still need to be equipped for what we need to help them with and, and learn to do in a workforce development. And so Marty and I started talking and, and they had already been in the discussions of doing something like this. And this is going to be very exciting both in the county, but also regionally. I've reached out to different people outside the county about this opportunity and what they might see happen here. And it's very exciting discussion. You know, there's some events that have happened around the county throughout the years, when the canal was built, when the railroad was built, the 24, when we were all excited for that, when this new school building was built, Bob. Uh, you know, those are things that are monumental in a, a history thinking back to what were special moments and this is going to be one of those moments that people look back in 40 or 50 years and say hey there, there was a forward-thinking group on this project and uh, I, I commend all of you for doing this I'm very proud to be a member of this community and this county to see something like this happen and I, I think it's going to be very exciting for all of us going forward so thank you all thanks that was two minutes see you take it down. <laughs> That is for the elementary kids, okay. and then we're going to go into a media area where our broadcasting and journalism kids can work, which is right here. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And it will actually be all green wall there for green screen kind of thing. Neat. And then this innovation tank is what you would have, we would walk into right when you go into the area, and then to the right is the fab lab for our middle school and high school kids. Awesome. And those lights really don't look like that. <laughs> but it looks good for the We're not going to make them do that. No. Yeah. That's just some uh, computer area. And this is going out to the, to the greenhouse. So the hydroponics units will be on the side there as you're walking. And then out here will be where the fish tanks are and the plants. 
And all around the outside here is landscaping and some outdoor classroom areas. It just, it, it's not on this actual video. So you have to come back April 28th and see it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it just, it just keeps running, scrolling, so.